Hey, what it do with the business is? It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, how is your boy Animal Brown? Animal underscore Brown if you're looking for me. I am Spike Lou on the same social sites. Come holler at your boy in these tweet streets and everywhere else. Man, what's popping, man? How's the quarantine doing for you? Are you still really quarantine? quarantine? That's over with, bro. I'm be yeah, real. quarantine over with. It's quarantine dead. on quarantine. People back in school. The school pictures are nuts. The school pictures are scary. Damn. Like I a seen scary movie. Pictures. I seen some pictures from TSU today. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. That shit look like 99, dude. Yeah. Hell hard. Niggas was Quake. out and getting on the hoes. I was like, oh my God. Corona is like. Yeah. I'm interested yeah. to see what's going to happen, man. College football season canceled. Don't nobody care about that, though. Be real. That's big, nobody though. That's a lot. That's big. Canceled. As long as the NFL popping, we, go- we Gucci. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, How you holding about up some... out there in the quarantine? Ah, no, nah, I'm good, man. Everything, yeah. listen. I took, I, took my, my, uh, I took my test. I'm straight. Did you have yeah. symptoms or you just took a random ass test? I just took a random ass. It was they were doing it for free. My partner put me on. He was like, "She, you want to pull up?" I was like, "All right." Okay. Nobody do free random quarantine. I mean, a COVID test and they ain't sick of it. Hey, now I know, man. That's funny. So you were negative or positive? I'm good. I'm negative. Oh, gotcha. Y'all know what I mean? Them glasses got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> COVID glasses on. Uh shit. All right, man. Um, episode 361, we cracking on the TV podcast. This episode, YBN crew breaks up. Uh, we've got another flat earther rapper, and we discuss the best songs of the year so far. But first, mm-hmm. Cardi B shook the internet with her latest single, WAP, featuring wow. Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, the song and video dropped Friday night to excuse me, Thursday night to mixed reviews and split Twitter down the middle. Some love it, some hate it. What side do you fall on? I'm here for it. Um, this is own brand for Cardi. It's own brand for Megan. They, they're rapping well on there, explicit. Like, this is 2020 in a nutshell. This is where we are with rap now. Uh, well, excuse me. I don't want to say this is where we are at rap, but this is a, a lane that has been well explored and it's very successful. Cardi, Nikki, Megan, all female rappers don't have to rap like this. I'm, I hated that narrative that was floated out there that this yeah. is an oversaturated thing. Like you got different varieties of females. I'm not mad at this. I think that they did their thing. They came out, it was lively. It fit the brand. Like everybody was talking about it, whether they liked it or hated it. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that bothered me is people, I feel like this this whole cloud chasing era that we in where people <laughs> feel like if they write a think piece about how they felt about Cardi and and, and Megan uh, disrespecting their bodies and all this stupid shit that has nothing to do with you if you didn't like it. Cut right. it off. Like I seen congressmen. I seen the <laughs> chick from the fucking documentary Tiger King. Uh, that, that shit. Carol oh, wow. Baskin. Like, I just seen this, uh, CeeLo said something, this nigga raping bitches out here. Like, come on, man. Like, let these women live and make their living doing what they do and they're good at. If it was, like, too raunchy or too over the top, disrespectful to her husband or her kids, and I could see what people are saying. But, like, this is her art. Like, she doing her thing. Like, all the hating is definitely unwarranted. I, I agree. I thought the song was dope. I thought the video was dope. Uh, it, it hit number one on Spotify and Apple Music. Um, YouTube, it hit 26 million views in 24 hours. That's a record for an all-female collaboration on YouTube. Um, It was highly anticipated. I was always interested when Megan came out to see how she uh, played along with Cardi and Nicki because, let's face it, Cardi and Nicki, that's 1A, 1B, however you want to do it. And history shows us that there haven't been too many female rappers at once that were hot. So they're always, it's always interesting to see how people will get along. I love the fact that they're on here kicking it like that. I love the fact that, that Megan has done a song with both of them and it's all good. Nobody sat here and dwelled on that goofy shit. So I thought the song was dope. That whole congressman, I played it by accident, and oh my god, like, man, get the like, wait, fuck out of here, bro. Drop, man, that nigga was waiting on that drop. Stop. 
Like, I, I fuck, I didn't accident. play it by accident. I played it purposefully. I seen somebody was like, well, what if my kids win the car list? I'm like, who cares? Nigga, that's on you. Yeah, that's got nothing tra- to do This isn't that. kid music, bro. Like, it, it, this there, there's a time and a place for everything. And this is an adult record. It is an adult video. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. Like I some people were some people were hot that Kylie Jenner was in it. Um 65,000 people signed a petition to have her removed. 65,000 people have way too much time on their hands, dude. Like I whatever. I, I like what Cardi what said, the, kind of defending that. What'd she say? What was the big deal about Kylie being in the video? I, I just think they think that she's kind of leeching off the culture a little bit. I, I, that's the vibe that I'm getting from the that. people, the naysayers. I don't know. I don't follow her like that. I have no idea where that's coming from. But people are kind of like, oh, my God, why is she in here kind of rolling their eyes and shit? But Cardi was like, nah, her family showed love to me. Um, Offset and Travis Scott are best friends. Like, they've shown love to my my daughter. They family has shown love to me. So, like, man, y'all overthinking this shit. <laughs> like, she cool people. She put other people in the video, too. There was a lot of people in there that were – I'm not going to say little known because they have hundreds of thousands of followers, but they weren't Cardi B. So, you know, Ruby Rose and a couple of other people. So I thought that was dope. She showed love to them, man. Like, I I fuck with Cardi, period, though. I I like her personality. So I thought it was cool. Are you here for the Ladies Night version of this? The remix, the the One Blood remix? Yeah, why not? Who you want to see on here? You want to see Rhapsody Rhapsody on this? (laughs) No, this ain't her bag right here. (laughs) Rhapsody I think she can get creative with it, though. She can get uh, creative with this. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. Um, I, seen, I seen No Name and Rhapsody. <laughs> hey, that would be it. They, they would probably flip it, though. It would be they, fine. They would flip it. It would be yeah. tough. They would probably flip it on something, and that actually might be kind of dope if they did do that. That would shut up the haters and shit. Fact. If, they, if they got them on there and they flipped it in some way, shape, form, or fashion, that'll be hard. That'll be an interesting yeah. remix. I'd be here for that. Uh... I ain't gonna go too backpacky. I say one of them. We can go okay. with maybe Rhapsody, and then like Saudi. Saudi should be on there. Be Sweetie, Sweetie, whatever fuck her name is. City Girls, one million percent should be on this. That's too ratchet, bro. We going to ratchet nah, overload. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go on and take this shit to the max. That's what the song is about. Absolutely. So get City Girls, JT at least definitely need a verse on there. Uh, I like I like the behind the scenes that Cardi posted on her IG. She posted uh, a behind the scenes of them creating the video and yeah. kind of writing it, like in like in the boardroom. No makeup, no glam, no flash, but them coming up with the concept of the video. I I like behind the scenes shit like that, where the lights and shit is all off, and it just showed them just creating. I thought that was cool. Megan was in there, her little backup dancers, and they were going over how it was gonna look. And when you hear them say that, and then see the video and how it turned out. Like, it's cool to see shit like that, man. It's work that go into this, and I, I like when people point that out. True. I, like, and I agree 100%. Cardi's personality is going to keep her around for a long time. That's a fact. Regardless of how people feel about songs like this, like, she's going to have a personality that's going to, like, stick out and nail shit like this all the time. Uh, yeah, that's why, that's why she's where she's at, and, um, and Nikki's where she's at. Absolutely. Had to throw that in, though. Well, I mean, Nikki pregnant doing her thing, so. That's true. <laughs> Shout out to her. Next, my guy YBN Corday, man, who had possibly the album of the year the last time he dropped. Speaking of drop, he's dropping his name. Uh, YBN, he's going by just Corday now. It is apparent that the YBN crew has split. Mm. And he's in discussions with Dreamville and J. Cole to join their roster. Let me ask you a question. Is this a bigger deal for Dreamville or is this a bigger deal for Corday? Um, I, I think it'd be a bigger deal for Corday. We all seen this coming. Uh, oh. The YBN crew mainly made up of the three dudes. Like the, the YBN name here, Cat, he tweeted out, quote, they left this YBN shit in the gutter. I'll turn it up by myself end quote. So his fans were like, oh shit. Okay. So all right, we see where that's going. But they listen, man, they have always been on that we brothers, this is family. Bro, I never bought that shit, bro. They met playing Xbox online, fam. They're from three different parts of the country. Like I don't, I don't even think, think I've really seen a friends like that. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying like I, I, 
I maybe see have seen two pictures with them together. Like, bro, like Na- Namir, he makes the faux trap rap music shit. Corday makes music for fans of 90s hip hop. And then YBN Almighty J is famous for dating Black China. And I don't even know why she's famous. So like they're in three completely the different lanes. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, I forgot you you follow the reality TV shit. The they're world. in three different lanes, dude. Like, so we saw this day coming. Kudos to Corday. Um, I didn't know about the, the Dreamville thing, but it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, that's a good match. That's a good match for him. J. Cole would be building a nice little MMG-like dream team if he was able to get Corday. That's, that'd be a nice free agent pickup. What? Sure. Who is Who else on Dreamville? Um, I like the young boy. Um, J.I.D.? J.I.D., he nice. You're not comparing that to MMG, bro. Stop. Well, this is a Relax. start. Relax. got to no. start somewhere. He get one more free agent, he'll be cooking. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, for YBN, I think that goes to say something about that generation thinking that they could be friends and build long-lasting relationships off meeting off Xbox. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but we are from a different generation. So that's true. are they proving it or not? I think that that's a good question, something good to follow. Secondly, this is bigger for Dreamville. Mm. Uh, Dreamville, regardless of the noise that they made, they need a star. J. Cole is, if if the reports are true, seriously contemplating basketball, seriously contemplating stepping back from rap a little bit. Yeah. They had one of the biggest albums far as promo and even songs, Grammy, Grammy nominated, nominated too. Dreamville, Revenge of the Dreamers, but no one, like we wondered when this first came out, took the lead and stepped up from that. Even J.I.D. He had a little bit of buzz. I ain't heard from him since quarantine. Boz, the Earth Gang, like, no disrespect to them niggas, but they, quiet. after that Dreamville shit, they didn't take that next level that they should have. So I feel like J. Cole seeing this guy, who people are calling the next generation's J. Cole, become available, become free to be able to run around with my clique, kick it with these niggas, sharpen his swords with my guys. This is a big deal for Dreamville because they need a franchise player. Yep. It's J. Cole in this last years, and I don't know if J.I.D. is that dude. I don't know if Earth Gang is that dude. Respectively, what they do for their, like, lanes are, is fantastic. But if we talk about somebody taking over for J. Cole and being groomed in his image, this is a big deal for Dreamville and the potential that YBN brings over. Yeah, it, brings over. Excuse me. Here's the problem with him signing over there, though, and I just thought about this. Okay. When you said that he is looked at as the next generation's J. Cole, which I agree with, I think he is. Mm-hmm. 48 Laws of Power, you can't outshine the master. If he signs to J. Cole, he just set his ceiling. And that's mm-hmm. not to say that that's a low ceiling, a very nice ceiling. J. Cole out here got his own Pumas and shit, trying mm-hmm. out for the NBA and some more shit. So that's a very nice ceiling. Do you want to set that for yourself if you're Cordado? Or do you just sign to a major? You just sign to Universal and have Corday Records and Absolutely. do it that way. He ain't not. I like Corday, but he ain't got it. He ain't got Damn. that it factor way. Like he's only 22 like, though. Bro. Like two chains can go start a true record. He's a lot older than Corday. Uh let me give you another example. Gunner. Gonna mm. got a brand, an image. I don't think Corday got that. He ain't even in the same ballpark as those niggas. He need a J. Cole. He need a mentor. Like, he mm. need someone that he can latch on to and someone showing him how to navigate, especially with his style and his flow. I feel like if J. Cole has that influence on him, where J. Cole was missing that influence when he was coming up, as we seen him dressed like other niggas at award shows and Mr. Fancy Watch, like you said, if J. Cole can kind of steer Corday to stick to that one path from beginning to end, he may be bigger than Cole. Ah. He may to be bigger than Cole. He may stop bathing and find him some J's to wear for five or six years or his hair grow out and go platinum with no features. He may do that. He got the celebrity girlfriend already and shit. Oh, he date the ten- he date the tennis chick. That's yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. in itself. The look yeah. she have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her Naomi, like her. cool. Put some yeah. put some respect on her name, though. I like her. She does her thing. Uh, yeah, and I, I would. I, this would be interesting to see, though, man. I, I like I like Corday. I'm interested to see what he's got coming up. We'll never hear from Name Namir or Almighty J ever again. I'm going to tell you Jay that right now. Find him another girlfriend. 
that's his best bet and get on reality TV or something. Like that play that lane. I wouldn't even be mad at him. Like, fuck it. I've never heard a song from dude. I just know him for getting his chain took in New York and dating Black China. That's the only two things I know him for. He was beefing with um Jay Prince, right? Nah, Jay Prince got his chain back. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Gun to my head, I couldn't name a song. Yeah. Um, moving on, man. On the people who I can't name a, a song from, Jizza, founding Wu Tang member Jizza. You on that G liquid sword, son? Absolutely son, not, son. B. You tripping, uh, son? B. Wow, God. that's a skip, God. Wow, uh, son. <laughs> founding Wu Tang member Jizza, the genius. He caught some heat online last week for not one but two conspiracy theories he posted. First, he questioned whether the Earth was really round. All right, mm. another one of those. And then he questioned the validity of vaccines, saying we've been getting flu vaccines for over 70 years and we still get the flu. My question, should artists second guess putting their conspiracy theories out there in the world? It depends on your demographic. Old nigga like Jizza, the old niggas that listen to him believe this shit. They believe in anti-vaccine because the niggas ain't got to get vaccinated no more. They passed that stage. They ain't got kids. The kid's 30, so they ain't being vaccinated. Or they just don't have enough knowledge. Like, like it's our, the irony in Jizz's nickname being genius is, is fucking crazy here. Yeah. But in, 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 in all truthfulness, like, when you get someone with him like him, an older rapper, if you don't want to be made fun of, if you still want to be taken seriously, then yeah, you should monitor this stuff. Like you can't just be spewing anything out there because forever in a day now, like the newer generations, if they even pick up on this at all, it's going to be like, oh, that's the old weird dude who think it's flat earth. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and like, they're not going to go to liquid swords or Wu-Tang or what people know him to be great for. I think that you get people of that age group trying to fit in and they post that weird shit on social media and it just never yeah. goes well, dude. Just like stay in your lane, my nigga. What's a cool freestyle over some old doo bop beat or something <laughs> on IG, man? And just let the niggas live with that shit, man. Don't be over here telling flat earth and like, don't be trying to jump in the mix, bro. Like I don't need Jizzy in the mix, man. Yeah, I didn't know Jizzy even was on, had an online presence like that until now. Um, All right. I, the, the question is, should they second guess putting their conspiracy theories out? I actually don't think they should because situations like this can be teaching moments. Like I think people need to be less harsh online and take more of an educating position. This is what J. Cole was talking about on his snow on the bluff. Like instead of lashing out and being aggressive or talking down to people that don't, are, aren't on your level, teach them, school them, put them up on game. Like this is what happened to um, Desi, the little comedian, when he put his tweet out that was off base, but at the time he thought he was actually saying some legit shit. The internet jumped on him and was like, no, nah, bro, this is why that's not true what you just posted. That's what people, Jizzle, my guy, I'm a fan or whatever. This is why the vaccination, this is why the flu still exists. This is why the earth is not flat. Like, I get it. The jokes are going to fly because it's easy to do that. But when, when somebody puts out something controversial or, you know, conspiracy theory like that, like the internet should be a safe space to get put up on game, even though I know the jokes are going to fly and everybody with a fucking avatar is going to make you feel like you're dumb as hell and they're the smartest person in the world. I wish it was more of a safe space. I look at our group chat as a safe space. Shout out to the real view group chat. You can, you should be able to throw, a theory out there and get either put up on game or be told why something is incorrect if it's incorrect not just shit on for throwing an idea out there because you didn't know so I th the internet should be like that just found out the hard way that it's not i disagree with you i don't think the internet should be like that i think like you said group chat conversations amongst friends then yeah but look at just friends know? bro you got the call you, you got a I don't think that you get to bounce ideas off in the internet though. Like this ain't, I, it especially when, for younger people, for younger people who were brought up around the internet. When you're talking about someone like Jizza who should have friends that he could talk to and have conversations amongst people. And maybe he has a Wu-Tang group chat. 
You know what I'm saying? Like he could bounce this off of, but trying to have the conversation online with people who like this is ruthless out here, my nigga. Like you're not going to get no, you're not going to get no leeway, especially if you're a nigga like Jizzle who probably halfway knows how to use the shit. (laughs) I just, (laughs) I think that you use, you you do that with your friends. You don't do that on the internet because people on the internet are not your friends. So you do that within your group check amongst your peers or their fans. Not for for IG. Yeah. They fans, they waiting for you to fuck up. That's what they doing. (laughs) <laughs> waiting for you to fuck up so they could dog you. You have something to talk about with their friends in their group chat. Hey, if I say something off base, somebody school me, man. Don't come at me sideways like you're a genius because you're probably not. You just got put up on something before I did, which is highly likely. Just put me up on game, and I don't want to hear all the extra shit. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's fair. But the earth is not flat, though, ladies and gentlemen. And the only people that I hear, it's funny. I know probably maybe four or maybe five people who are in healthcare fields, like professionally, and they all swear by flu vaccines. The only people that I hear that are anti-vaccine are people with zero days of health uh, education. And I find that very interesting. I'm not going to say what side of the fence I'll fall on. I just think it's interesting. Anti-vaccine is, is, is a crazy subject and dangerous. Because if you walk Probably. around, nobody kids get vaccines, and we're looking at a much more crazy world as far as disease spreading. So, yeah, conversation for another day. <clears throat> Your man's before we get out of here and get to our topic of the hottest songs of the year, baby, aka Birdman, aka Brian Williams. He's partnering with Benny Boom, mm. and he's gonna bring you a brand new film called Tasmanian Devil. Baby is dipping into a brand new uh, forte. This movie had a lot of critical acclaim at a couple of film festivals. I got a question for you and Baby's new endeavors are concerned, as far as they're concerned. Are you excited that Baby's getting into movies or do you just wish he would go away based off his history? And shout out to Cash Money Films. He, along with um, Benny Boom, are producing this. They put the bread up behind it. I think this is dope. I'm loving this pivot from Birdman. I would absolutely rather see Cash Money Films than a a new Cash Money Records stable of artists, you know, trying to reinvent Gutter Gutter for the sixth time and trying to, you know, Young Money too, Younger Money, no. Like, I don't need any of that shit. Um, I especially like that he got behind this movie that I typically wouldn't have associated with some, with somebody like him. Cause I watched the trailer to it and it's supposed to come out this month. Uh, I don't know how COVID has affected that, but it was supposed to come out August 22nd. But the plot of Tasmanian devil is about a, an African kid who's going to college in the United States and discovering fraternity life. I'm that's much that I didn't, I wouldn't have seen that coming from Birdman. So I think that's super dope. He didn't give us the same run of the mill, you know, baller blocking seven, you know, or, you know, the paid in full wannabe shit. He gave us something different. I don't even know if it's going to be good or not. I'm just glad that he's thinking outside of the box. Benny Boom is the right guy to do it. We know his music video catalog is ridiculous. He's also dip, dabbled in a couple of movies, directed Next Day Air, which was some look cool, and All Eyes on Me, which was also some look cool. But I think with some more reps, he'll be all right behind the, the film in terms of movies. But it's a great look for Birdman, man. Shout out to shout out to Cash Money Films. I'm here for it. I agree with you. I think that Birdman's vision is one thing that can't be denied. Like yep. the vision for Hot Boys, put big timers together, split them up, got juvenile, and, and that's musically. But still, there's a marketing to it. There's a there's a whole approach that he took. It took cash money to what we know it as today, even with Drake and Nicki and Young Money, like you said, like yep. Baby is a visionary. And I, I'm, I'm very excited to see his input or he, what he even ties his name to musically because of, oh, excuse me, with this, because of his vision. I think this movie, not only will it be dealing with the fraternity life, I think it's also going to be like an immigrant, like, and he's moving to a, like a lower class neighborhood as well. So you're going to be dealing with like the hood and shit as an African guy over in college. So I'm, it sounds like an interesting story, one that I haven't seen a lot of. I definitely think that there's something or a career path that Baby can continue to delve in because he got vision. He knows how to spot uh, the wave, the next thing. What was the shit that he did with uh, Rich Homie Quan and Young Thug? Uh, Rich Gang? 
Yeah. Like, even every time that you counted him out, he was able to pivot and, and reinvent himself with brand new vision. So I think also with the movies, he's going to be able to do the same thing. He's going to find him a quick, not a quick, but a, a dope lane that's going to yeah. fit him. And then he's going to take off. I feel like and, Cash Money Films is the next thing. And he can stand right behind the scenes. I don't need Birdman starring in this. No, he ain't got to be in nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't, we don't need, need any of that. Soundtrack. No, nah, none of that. We don't need the... the the lug just, boots just, just sign the all check, through bro. the movie and shit. Like, no, bro. Just like you just said, sign the, check. sign the check over, sit back and watch the residuals come in when it gets syndicated on HBO, dude. Like, just do that. I, that would be a great move. I don't need another revamp of cash money. I promise you. I, I, he may have one or two dope rappers, man. Just link up with somebody else and have them run that shit. Birdman, this is your lane right here. If you are listening, cash money films is the play. I am feeling this. Hey, we can get the Cash Money Chronicles. Line that up. You want to do that? Yeah, we can do that. that. Let's keep, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, Benny Boone did all eyes on me. The Birdman so, documentary was a flop. That's yeah, the Apple mean. Music joint was true. That wasn't it. That wasn't, that wasn't it. It was a flop. They dropped the ball on that. I don't even think they even finished it. They were supposed to have, like, a part two or something. That shit was garbage. And then he was supposed to do something with Ray J. And shit. Like, no, nigga, no. We don't need any of that. Just do the cash money films, dope, interesting stories that haven't been told. Man, he could parlay him, say, next thing you know it, he's going to get the face tats removed, man. We're going to be like, damn, look at Bird, man. That shit crazy. He's going to be on Vogue talking, or <laughs> Hollywood Reporter, nigga, talking about his fucking <laughs> movies. Uh, that would be dope, man. I'm here for it, man. Shout out to Bird, man. Facts. No more music, though. I'm glad he retired. He said he hung it up. Please, God. Bless us with no more, no more Birdman versus. Y'all let us know what y'all think of Birdman and Cash Money Films. Real quick though, baller blocking, good movie, slaw movie. Some slaw. Was it? No, it wasn't that bad. Slow. Damn, it's been a minute. Slow. I don't even remember what it was really about. (laughs) I don't either. I remember with some slaw though. But I, ain't gonna die. I do remember, uh, well, not even remember, but watching that No Limit Chronicles, that yeah. made me want to watch Unbodied again. Is that streaming anywhere? It's on YouTube. I don't want to watch it on YouTube. Well, I it's, guess I, I mean, can watch it on YouTube. It looks terrible, same. though. You know? I mean, he yeah, the quality. Shit. He need to go on HD, that motherfucking drop it on Netflix. This was pre-4K. The new generation need to see that Unbodied in HD. Then, then, hey, man, I ain't going to lie. Watching it in the 2020s, rough. Like they going super hard on there. No, that's what the new generation need to see what P was about, man. P, people got P fucked up. I don't they know if that's gonna fly today. Noodles. They see these noodles and these ugly ass shoes, these Mazzotti's or whatever the fuck this nigga putting out. Got him on uh what is it, next generation hip hop, whatever that is, you know, with Lil Romeo. And they oh, need growing to see, up hip hop. Um, yeah, they need to see I'm about it. They need to see P and Boz. Oh, I'm about it. Let niggas know. I was so happy to see Boz, man, on the No Limit Chronicles, too. That's a fact. Boz was like the first nigga, the the, the famous non-rapping shout-out nigga. That's a fact. (laughs) Yeah, that's a huge fact. Um, But, yeah, I'm about it, boy. Hey, listen, I I remember, I watched it the other day. I watched about half of it. I remember more of it than than I thought I did. I remember, it's a lot of lines on there that's actually pretty memorable. Um, it's a bad movie, but it's, it's a good Dolphin, bad movie. Dolphin Willie was a classic character. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Officer Friendly. Officer like Friendly. All them. It's tough, but it, boy, that it's, shit was a, yeah. it's, it's a little edgy. A little edgy. Niggas it's said a little edgy, real, guys. Niggas said those was real crack smokers. Boss. <laughs> yeah, that shit right there, man. Oh, man. Y'all check out I'm About It, man, if you can find it on YouTube. All right, man, we talking music. We are here August, fourth quarter is around the corner. We thought it was going to be a little bit of a bigger year than it was. COVID threw us a little curveball, but we still got some good records, some good joints this year. Um, we saw a couple of lists. You, saw me a, you shot me a list that Hip Hop DX had as the best songs of the year so far. Got us thinking. What do we think are the best songs of the year so far? So listen, before we go into our shit, and we've got a special surprise too for the listeners after we review and go over a couple of these joints, we're going to look at Hip Hop DX's list of their best songs of the year so far and just break down maybe three or four of these a piece, like what stood out, what did they get right, what did they get way off, 
what jumped out to you as their list as having one of the best songs of the year? What's the first joint you saw or noticed? Uh, what jumped out to me, and just to reiterate on the topic, you wanted to have a conversation on, you know, how singles, songs, music industry continuing to be affected by COVID. Yeah. And like you said, we were expecting the Drakes and we were expecting the Kendrick Lamars and more from well, J. Cole been doing his thing, but Big Sean, he's been a hold up. So yeah. not having those big name artists, just the, the songs that were keeping things going during this time, music business is essentially shut down. Uh, so to be able to get traction and, and have a list of, of songs halfway through the year, I feel like we, we, is a good thing to talk about as far as us as hip hop connoisseurs, just on where the game is, uh, what's being digested and how it's being digested. With that being said, the Adventures of Moon Man and Slim Shady by Kid Cudi and Eminem surprised the shit out of me that this is getting the people were when it dropped. I think it was about a month ago. Yeah, give or take somewhere in uh, three weeks ago. I was surprised yeah. people were even discussing this. I guess that I'm not in the Kid Cudi or Eminem bandwagon place. But the reaction that this got online and, and the praise that people were giving this song, like I was completely shocked about it. And to see it on, on this list and not see it as like a throwaway, even though Eminem is on there, is baffling to me. Did you like this song? Yeah, that song was fire. Um, oh, my God. It was, it was an unexpected collaboration from two people with strong, loyal fan bases. Mm -hmm. They both have two very... <laughs> very strict fan bases and That's to see them come together it was a big deal to those fan bases and the song is actually banging like that beat is fire although i don't know what kid cuddy is talking about personally i'm, I'm gonna keep it I a thousand know what he's talking about yeah i i, I kid cuddy's okay he's tolerable but he, he really don't be talking about nothing to me but eminem murdered that that's one of his better verses in a long time and um so it, it worked for me though that song was hard uh, the next one, one of my favorite verses of the year, and I never thought I'd be the person saying this, Freddie Gibbs featuring Tyler, the creator, something to rap about. Yeah. Um, Tyler was in his bag on this song. I loved it. Like I say, from the time I quoted it from the album, but this sounds like the brand new boat I'm finna buy or finna jump off of, or however you open the line. I feel like it was classic. It was dope for that song. Tyler, the creator, is getting a lot more attraction as being a, a dope artist. I think after the Grammy snub and they, with they, the whole conversation from there, not even just him being a dope rapper, but that Igor album and him being a dope artist and being looked at outside of the box, being listed on this list, being having such a dope rap verse to even add on to the complexity of himself as an artist, I feel like was a dope look. Did you hold that Tyler verse in high regard like I did? The Tyler verse is cool. I do like the song. It's cool. As a whole. It's cool. Tyler the Creator is tough for me to get into his rap, and I'm going to be real. I'm going to keep it a buck. Uh, but I do. The song is fire, period. Mm. That's, one of the, that's one of my better songs. That's one of the better songs on that project. And I'm not surprised that that's on here. There are one or two that I prefer on that album more than that. But, again, it's an unlikely duo. That's another one. An unlikely duo, just like the kid cutting Eminem, is Freddie Gibbs and Tyler the Creator. It's a very unlikely duo, but it worked. And so I, I can understand why they put it on here. So that's, I'm not mad at that. Give me one more on the list. The last one is probably the biggest song or the biggest song that I'm going to take off this list. I mean, it almost made my three that we're going to select as our favorite three songs of the year so far. But I'd rather put it here, and that's the little baby bigger picture. Mm. That album's fire. Uh, I felt like of all the Black Lives Matter protesty type songs, that this was the best one. Uh, I liked Lil Baby and what he did on here and the bars that he put down, especially because you weren't expecting it. You were expecting him to come from another place talking about this or not even to address it at all and just stay in his trap lane. Uh, but for him to address it, the visual to it was absolutely amazing and i think that we, this sticks out to me because of in the future people are going to look back at this song and say this is what put little baby on another level this is what put him from trap rap popular to a superstar yeah yeah and we talked about that song man and and 
Listen, it, I mean, it's one of the better songs of the year. You know what I mean? When you think of 2020, that's going to stand out, in my opinion, at the end of the year. Uh, he touched on the, the things that are going on from his perspective. He did it in his way. We haven't really seen that side of Baby Like That up until this point. And I thought it caught a lot of people off guard in a good way. So uh, I absolutely understand them putting this on here. That was a good look, dope video. Uh, that song gets played on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... It, that's a banger, bro. Like it's especially in the A, nigga. This theme's oh yeah, my Hanna, nigga. Yeah, and, and I'm here for it, man. So I'm, I'm glad he took that approach to speak on those things, and and he kept it a hundred, man, from his perspective. I, I like it. That's that takes a lot of responsibility and a little bit of guts to do that because you can get crucified for that if you do it the wrong way. So uh, I, I applaud him for stepping out on that ledge. Um, if I had to what go three, three songs, you got. So those are so you're saying those are three for three, and that's a respectable list that those three are on there. Those three are respectable. Or uh, the, there was one the surprise for me, the Eminem and Kid Cudi. That was a surprise. I'm surprised okay. that those names still move the meter and are listed on you know best of list still gotcha. in 2020. Uh, just especially how quiet uh, Cudi has been and Eminem's been mediocre at best. Gotcha. Um, and then the other ones, I feel like they're gonna be. Uh, for little baby, this is going to be a marker in his career, which is why I was. It affirmed that this being on the list of songs of the year lets me know that people are paying attention. And the Tyler Create, I was just like, I said, surprised. I, yeah. I wasn't out of context when I said, "Damn, this nigga, he ripped this." Like, I ain't yeah. even a Tyler fan. This nigga going in, but like, those were the three I picked out where, like, I felt like I was on track with what they were saying and and, and felt other than the Eminem joint. What did you have? Like, what what were your thought processes and picks looking at this list um again this is hip-hop dx top songs of the year so far they have a song on here jack harlow what's poppin remix featuring uh tory lane's the baby and lil wayne dj drama i gotta give it to him you want to talk about somebody's reinvented themselves obviously he was the he was the mixtape king um shout out to case lay when the when the mixtapes were popping in the mid-2000s Feds kicked the door, put an end to that shit. He discovered Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi's disgruntled. Okay, cool. I'm going to discover this Jack Harlow kid from Louisville, Kentucky. And he's got it. He's been pumping him for the last year and a half, maybe two years on his IG. And here comes the day when that kid has a hit. That's all on satellite radio, terrestrial radio. And he's got big dogs, hot ass rappers, and a legend with Wayne on his remix. I have to give it to not only the artist himself, Jack Harlow, because the song is hot. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. Like the song is banging, but I got to give it to DJ Drama, man, for even being able to put that play together, reinvent himself again from behind the scenes, not letting um, losses get in the way of continuing to, to grow as a, as an executive and win. That Jack Harlow was popping, is banging, and the remix is hard. All of them took flight on there, in my opinion. Are you fucking with that? What's popping? Brand new cool yeah, got options. That's one of those songs you look up and you like, you can't believe that you like it. And yep. then by the third or fourth time you're hearing it, you like hear it by them, you know a couple yeah. of words and you feel it. <laughs> I ain't think that I would be the nigga singing no Jack Harlow song when it came on, but that motherfucker is banging. That was popping. I like it. Everybody that's ripped tough. it on there. Like you said, you got the big names on there. Even he ripped it, it clever yeah. little lines. I think watching Dave also helped me like be receptive to this day was such a funny um yeah. sitcom and just made you like the the world of white rappers makes you want to understand it more uh with the exception of eminem uh but yeah this, <laughs> this, this jack harlow song i like it man i like this what's popping that's a hot song I, I ain't gonna front yeah, I can't um, all. next up on here i thought it was interesting they have future and drake life is good now this came out at the top of the year before Shit oh. hit the fan, and so we thought you think it was gonna go off. Yeah, we we thought the year was. We we're like, okay, like this shit. Listen, we got the what a time to be alive two about to drop. They got the big dog uh, video um, with the with them in the fucking burger place and shit. Like the dope video with them acting in it. We got the the beat switch up like Drake ripping their future doing his future thing. Twenty twenty was looking very promising early. Then shit kind of hit the fan. It started to turn into a future featuring Drake and future did a remix and didn't get Drake on the remix. Then got a little tricky, but I think people forget when that came out, how promising the year was getting ready to look. And I think it got swept under the whole COVID rug 
and it's a little bit forgotten about at this point, but I thought the record was hot, and I thought it worked for them. It showcased their strengths. Uh, I think it's smart for them to rap on two different types of beats, honestly, and combine them into one. I think that's a nice play for them. It worked on What a Time to Be Alive on the one or two joints. And so I, I, people forget about that record, I believe, and I think that that was banging. It seems like forever ago when it came out. It seemed like right. three years ago. Nigga, I thought that was last year. I thought that was <laughs> December, nigga. I'm looking it up on my phone when you said that. It seemed like that shit had happened in 2019. COVID been lingering around for so long, but um, yeah, yeah, it would have been cool to hear that somewhere. It would have been cool to hear exactly. that song out and about, maybe a little lounge or something like that. But I agree with you. That this was like this had the expectations for the year high. We thought yeah. 2020 was going to come out pitching fastballs, nigga, yep. uh, only to be derailed by COVID. But, yeah, I love this song. I like Future's version. I like Drake's part. Uh, like, this shit's fire. It worked. And, yeah, that, unfortunately, the curveball, like I said, the COVID through, we weren't able to see the fruition of that whole campaign. Uh, but I was here for that. I still listen to that Life is Good. Yeah, that's banging. Um, and then thirdly is a is an actual song that I have on my list too. It's Jay Electronica, Jay Z, uh, Travis Scott with the blinding. That's probably my favorite song on that Jay Electronica. The one that I revisit up until this point. I know that album was a little underwhelming for some. The impact wasn't as heavy as we thought it may be, considering people have been waiting ten years for this project, and to consider that Jay Z, the arguably the greatest rapper of all time, was attached to it. It didn't really make this big of a splash as a lot of people wanted to, but that blinding song is undeniable. That shit is complete in utter flames. They all they both on us snapping. Travis Scott on there. You could have argued that was a placeholder for Kanye, but they had Travis Scott anyway. Um, the dream on there was some ad libs and shit. That shit is fire. That's early on in the record. So I thought, like, I was thinking the album was about to be insane here and that. I think that's like the second or third song. It didn't quite live up to that, but I've got, uh, it's a good album, but it just no, ain't. It's not, eh. it's not a good album. I ain't listened to that day electronic in full to the, to the, since the day it came out. See what I'm saying? Not but that doesn't mean it's bad, it's though. Slaw. It no, it's not a slaw. No. That's what it means. No, no. If Jay Z wasn't that. on that, if Jay Z wasn't on that album, you wouldn't be defending it. But he is on there, so it's I'm only Jay Z it. that you're defending. That's not <laughs> the Jay Electronica album. Uh, but I, that song I, is fire. I, I I gotta double back. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't familiar with that. Like I said, I ain't listened to that since the shit came out. Um, not a Madden playing album, not a <laughs> I'm getting work done in the lab playing album. I'm not sure when you're listening to that, uh, but you know. I'd have to double back. I was surprised. Did you know Jay Electronica was like 42 years old? I didn't know that, but it makes sense, though. That Damn, makes I thought sense. dude was in his early 30s, dude. Like, no, bro. Hell he was no. 42? That makes sense. Damn. That in makes what sense. what planet does that make sense? A nigga delaying his album for 10 years and he's 42 years old. It makes sense, bro. The delaying his album, period, didn't make sense. But him being 42 does. That adds up. I'm going to be real. And that song made my list. That shit is fire. What's your third song? I just named three. That was your third song? Yes. Finally, you're done. <laughs> so what, what, were your, um, what were your three songs of the year? Like, not off of their list, uh, but the songs that stood out to you outside of the context that uh, Hip Hop DX had. Like, what songs did you already have in your head? Like, this is going to be in my rotation from here on out. Um, I had, so here are my, here are three of mine on the list. Um, I, I've got Freddie Gibbs, Scotty Beam, uh, with Ross. That's, listen, man, that shit is fucking ridiculous. It's probably my favorite song on arguably my favorite album of the year. So I've got that up there as song, as one of my songs of the year. I've got Pop Smoke, Got It On Me. Um, I, you know what I'm saying? Pop Smoke, I was becoming a big fan earlier in the year. Um, he got killed and they put his posthumous album out and I thought it was some, it was some little cool. He experimented a lot on there, but he had a joint where he sampled that many men. It's called got it on me, which was fire. That is on repeat to this day. And then my third, um, I'll go with, um, star Lito daddy issues. Mm. Um, we, re we reviewed that, that album. That was my favorite song on that album, him flipping the term daddy issues and, 
um, speaking on it and how it affects men, I thought was genius. Um, and especially how it affects men that end up with kids. Uh, I thought that was especially genius. So those are three of my top songs of the year. Um, if you are asleep on those, please wake up. They are all complete and utter flames. That is a fact. That Scotty Beeman is definitely an honorable mention on mine, man. I, mm. I don't want to say it twice. Uh, but for my three, your man's that Chicago freestyle, I'm fucking with it heavy. Oh, yeah, uh, that's hard. It, the Chicago freestyle was fucking fire. Drake got off and that that's his bag. Yeah, it is. Um, is that the wait, is that the um the what's the name two, sample? Two no, nah, that's not the the, the That's not the song cry, is song it? Song cry and it said two thirty. Oh, with the mama man on there singing. Nah, yeah, that's just stupid. Yeah, that's yeah. Bang. Um Slim Thug. Slim Thug is gonna be quietly like gone. Like y'all listen to that Slim Thug Thug Life album. And at the yes, end of the year, you're gonna be talking about it. it's one of the better albums, especially if you're about in our demographic of hip hop. But a song on there called My Shoes, you got yeah. the Anthony Hamilton sample on there. That's tough. That's tough. Immediately on repeat. Um, yeah. and added to the, the the repertoire. So that was one of my favorite songs of the year so far. And lastly, man, I can't leave the man J. Cole out, Lion King on Ice. Mm. Murdering that. That's you like that one over the other one? I do. I do. I like that one a little bit better, man. That, 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 is that the one that Cole produced or is that the one that your boy produced? No, nah, that's the, the one King that T Minus produced. T Minus produced that one. Yeah. That one just sounded a little bit more crisp to me. I prefer that Lion King on Ice. So those are my feet three favorite songs uh just since we're having the conversation right now i looked at this list let mm -hmm. me let me point out something that doesn't belong on here okay there's one or two and this is my girl so i hate that i gotta even say this megan the stallion she got the girls and in the savage. hood no nah, no nah, that song was popping i'm not i can't do nothing with that her mm -hmm. and beyonce that was popping the girls in the hood joint though that didn't make no noise it that song bigger than that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, I think she went to the sample, the, the, the she went to the hip hop sample 90s well too soon because she had just did that. I'd rather keep, she already just did that Pac. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and then you turn around and do the e, the boys in the hood, the easy shit. Like it just, it, uh, no, 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 no. That wasn't it. They have this on here as one of the better songs of the year. That's not true. And I fucks with her heavy. She snapped on this Cardi. I actually liked the Pac sample joint. I actually fucked with that. And the, the the Savage was, you know, her and Beyonce, that's going to go. That Girls in the Hood is a skip, though. That's nothing. I, you can't ride. ever go wrong. You can't ever go wrong with that beat. And her ride super that beat, hard. Her riding that beat is pretty. It's there for, but like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't like just creative. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like she needed to do something else on there, have some more people on some just just something creative about it. It should have been. So I agree with you there. Um if I had to stick one more that stuck out to me and, and hit the nail on the head, you talked about your boy Pop Smoke. I like the woo. That song with him at 50 and um mm. Roddy Rich. That shit yeah. bang. Yeah. That shit right there, bang. That was the experimental shit that I was talking about. They, he was working more on the harmonizing tip. You could tell 50 was coaching him. Mm -hmm. It was cool. I just thought it was too soon. I'm gonna be real. I, like I thought it. he should have he should have rolled that drill sound a little bit longer. But people like that song though. Like that song Absolutely. was hot. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were saying Everybody rich on fire. Him. You were saying something before we started recording about your man with Polo G. I like Polo G. Yeah, you were saying something about one of his songs. I like Polo G. It's not. They do have a Polo G song on here. This isn't the one that I prefer. I like the one. Um, I like the one featuring. Uh, Chopper. Um, it's not on here, but I do like it. Uh, but I like I like Polo G as a person. I watched a little documentary on him. His mom is his manager. He in Chicago trying to trying to make it out. You know how that go. Yeah. You know, I th I thought it was pretty interesting. He got it. He got his head on straight, man. He he named his album the Goat. And uh, when asked about the title, he he said it was in relation to greatest of all time. He said too many people have come before him and paved the way for him to call himself that. But it was more had to do with his um his astrological sign. And I thought that was a smart answer for a young a young cat. Uh, so I really fuck with with the boy Polo G. I like him. What's I, I rock with him. I can't remember. I, I don't even gonna fuck his sign up. But it had to do with the, yeah whatever with the goat and horns or some shit. Yeah, 
I believe so. I'm not yeah, I'm, really sure. I'm out the loop on the on the, on the astronomical astronomical astrological science, if I can say the shit. I ain't up on him. Yeah, I ain't. I ain't really. I'm gonna have to check him out and make sure I see that. And real quick though, speaking of Chicago, man, we gotta say a rest in peace to FBG Duck as well. Um, the Chicago artist. He was only 26 years old. He was gunned down in actually a high end part of Chicago in the high end shopping district in Chicago. He was a popular in that drill scene in, in the shy man, and um, it was sad. I saw his mom talk on the press conference asking people not to retaliate because his his brother, who was also a rapper, had been killed two years ago. So she lost both her sons to gun violence, and they were both musicians. He had four kids. It was a terrible, bad situation all the way around. But uh, we gotta, I, I forgot, we gotta say rest in peace to to uh, him. And Is that brothers. FBG for Free Bands Gang? Is he? I don't believe so. I'm no. at, Oh, you don't know. Nah, it's FBG Clout Boys. It's some Chicago shit. Man, that that whole situation is you gotta be from Chicago, I guess, to understand it. Cause I seen some some crazy stuff going on, man. Uh, Chief Keith, he was Chief Keith was making fun of like yeah, him dying. Right. And uh it was somebody else. I know uh, Dark was, was, He was beefing with all of them niggas, the, the FBG duck nigga. Yeah. And um one of his homeboys had an interview was saying he had been telling him to leave Chicago because like everybody he was telling him so you're gonna get caught lacking one day and you got yep. too much beef with too many niggas. A nigga dropped a diss song about this nigga the day after he died. Yep. Like, yeah. he, like fuck he had it already recorded. Yeah, and, um, was, but they said that he had a history of making fun of niggas that died and shit too. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's different world, man. man. It's it's different up there. Chicago, man, y'all stay safe up there. Um, but to you these songs see. Before you get off of that, have you seen oh. the picture of Chicago tonight? Like you seen uh -uh. what they did? Nigga, they raised the bridges. You can't even get in the downtown. This is like some shit off Batman. You know oh, how they let shit. the bridges up where you couldn't get in the city? Yeah. Chicago, Chicago blocked off like this. And so the state was looting last night downtown. They raised the bridges up. You can't even get into the main part of the city. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow. 2020, folks. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that's wild. Wow. Like, back to these songs of the year. What we're going to do is we're going to put together a playlist in conjunction with this episode of 20 songs from On Deck. It'll be on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal. It'll have the songs that we mentioned that were our favorites and then a couple of more, obviously, because we didn't name 20. You'll get 20 bangers. Some of them you might have heard of. Some of them you might not have. Man, we're gonna, we look to put you on, man. That's what we're here for. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you guys rocking with us on the list. We got some wins and losses for this week, right? Absolutely, man. When we got our first W to Rose and Two Chains for putting on a solid battle and for being smart, capitalizing off the moment and announcing two new albums that are on the way. <laughs> Which one are you looking for? Uh, Chains, Rose, or both? Both of them, man. I want to hear both of those. Titty Boy sound like he was pretty pissed off on Breakfast Club uh, for the disrespect, <laughs> the disrespect that he was giving. And Ross, man, like Ross forever in mode, like one of the best album announcements I've ever seen. Man. Richer than I ever been. <laughs> I mean, Ross is cold. Ross was born to be a rapper. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, I, I like the I like the way that they handled themselves during that battle. Yeah, I like the way that they played it afterwards. They they were respectful to each other. Yeah. It's just everything and the whole way that they even like the, the afterwards and the beforewards to that battle. It, I think it was it shows at, uh, the elk of MC that both of those guys are. Who did you have winning? Two, two chains. No, nah, I'm bullshit. It was Ross. It was a. Uh, Ten nine one. Mm, that's about time. as close as you can get. Yeah, it was ten nine one. Yeah, um, it was. I thought it was entertaining. It started off slow. We're starting to see that as a trend. They kind of mm. start off slow. Like people don't really know how to. Uh, like, do I talk shit? Do that's I? That's why you need somebody in there that don't give a tip. Gonna make that motherfucker do what it do, man. Yeah, he that's true. There. You need somebody with a little bravado, like two chains and, and Ross. They, they got, got that swag. They got swag. Dude. They ain't got that bravado like a nigga like Tip. Like Yay gonna have if he come in there and do that shit. Like a nigga that's gonna be like, nah, y'all ain't fucking with me. Yeah. So, uh, I like the first said he got 20 more for whoever wanted to, though. Yeah, yeah, and he does because I, he, I was wondering why he didn't play a certain joints. And he actually he does, he might can do 20 more. He might can do 20 more. He might got like 15 more. 
He ain't got 20 more. He might Ross ain't got more. Ross ain't got twenty more to go yeah. with a nigga like Two Chains. He, he go with he Wale. Got, he can maybe go with a nigga like Wale. He, he somebody might got twenty like more. Nah, not nah, absolutely not. Like if Yo Gotti called Rick Ross tomorrow and said, "Come got, on with them," tw- he got him easy. What easy? After putting the toilet, like, you would have been easy. right. You would have been right if he hadn't already battled Two Chains. If Rose got to show up next week and battle Yo Gotti, easy. Gotti going to get him out of there. Gotti got Shit. hits. Hits. Yeah, eight Gotti of them. Gotti been making hits for like 10 years. He got eight, eight of them. Eight? Yeah. Yo Gotti? That's yeah. Ins- that's insane. Shout out to Gotti, man. That Tennessee stand up. Um, we had another W to Kodak Black. Um, he saw the video of the Burger King employee getting slapped by the angry customer. I'm sure oh, wow. everybody has seen it by this time. Uh, he got his lawyer on the phone. And said, hey, man, we're going to pay for that guy a vacation anywhere in the world, man. So kudos to Kodak Black making a difference, even while still being locked up. That's real shit, man. Shout out to Kodak, man. Hopefully he gets everything taken care of and uh, gets out soon and is able to, to continue to turn over the new leaf that he's found. Uh, but yeah. that video was disturbing, man. Now, dude was look- tripping, man. Fuck wrong I, with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Look, buddy, look, he didn't get killed, man. Yeah, he was bullshit. I like that. Boy, that was some bullshit. He was bullshit. Um, shout out to Kodak, man. That was a, that was a nice play. Uh, also, Adrian Broner reached out, said he would give dude free boxing lessons. He need a box. Adrian Broner need to hit that nigga that hit him. Hit that white <laughs> dude and smack that white boy. He need to hit him. Yeah. I love to see that. Um, lastly, we have an L to Wale. Um, he's following in J. Cole's footsteps, trying to play pro ball. Not basketball, but football. He expressed interest uh, via Twitter in playing for the XFL. Uh, do you think the 5'10", 170-pound Wale has a shot at the XFL? Wale got to relax, man. Like, he, like this, this is why Wale rubs people the wrong way. Your man's got a, as a legitimate shot as you could have as a rapper to get in the NBA in 2020. Yeah. And this nigga's like, well, shit, I'm good at football. I can play in the act. Like, man, shut up, dude. Like, no, <laughs> like, no. Just congratulate your mans and, and your little XFL pipe dreams. Like, no, relax. This is another L for Wale and being Wale. Yeah, he tripping. No mm-hmm. one no one wants to play for the XFL, though. Like, like, nobody wants to grow up to play for the XFL. Let's be very clear. Multi-million rapper. Like, you're not going to go play running back in the XFL make 35000 dude. Yeah, nah. He put and, – and get your neck broke um, trying to <laughs> trying to go through the hole. And, no, oh, nigga. Your head's going to fly out of his helmet <laughs> and shit, nigga. Yo, he, boy. he put the L in XFL with that. Um <laughs> On Decker of the Week, um, shout out to Facebook, Rap Chat, the group. Funniest comment I saw all week. Shout out to Reggie Jackson, man. He said, I'm going to be heated if they go a whole five-episode series and don't tell us what the hell happened to Mr. Servon's eye. I am with you That's on that. That's funny I, as fuck. I thought I was the only fuck. person that peeped that. Are they not going to say what happened to Servon? I the only person that peeped that nigga eye. It took a minute for me to notice. No, it didn't, bro. The motherfucker green. They got a green eye, looking like Cyclops, dude. <laughs> uh, they need to. They uh, need to elaborate on that. That I agree with them. That's a great comment. That's a, a great pull for on deck of the week. The professional on deck of the week. We're gonna go with Hit Boy and Nas for working together for a Nas album. Allegedly, Nas mm-hmm. came out and addressed all the. Uh, well, he ain't really address his bad beat selections, but he does know that it exists and he's gonna work with Hit Boy. So I'm I'm anxious to see how that sounds. So on deck of the week to those two for working together. Man, August 21st, I believe, is when that's supposed to come out. I don't know if it's an EP or a full project, but um, my money's on an EP. I <laughs> it's probably gonna that. be six, seven songs max, but we'll see. Um, what you got to put me on? Uh to put you on. Um, a brand new show on Apple TV started off slow. It ain't brand new now, actually. It's called The Morning Show. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Carell, Jennifer Aniston, uh, Reese Witherspoon. Yep. A host of other people. It's it's a very interesting show. The last two episodes are fucking amazing. Mm. Just based off the conversation that you can have, uh, based off what happened, like seven, 
well, eight, nine, and ten. Eight when the shit actually happens, then nine and ten, the reaction to what happens. Like that shit. It's it's some good ass TV. You should see it and have a conversation with people who you know you're close to, like you said in your group chats. But very interesting. I can't wait to see you guys watching, and I can ask y'all what y'all think. Yeah, I, I saw the first episode uh, when it first came out. I don't know why I stopped because I, I thought I, the first episode was cool. But I cannot wait till you finish it. Like, yeah, you get asking the hell out of must, it. Must nah, the question is must ask though. Like it's a it's a must conversation to have after the seventh episode, eight, nine, and ten. Just like how he dealt with what went on. Like that shit good as fuck. The black chicken that deserves a fucking Emmy for her role too. And you gonna mm. know exactly who I'm talking about by the end of uh, episode ten. Shout out to Apple TV Plus, man. Defending Jacob on there is fire. Um, if I had to put you on something, I'm going to go to the music tip. You mentioned Slim Thug earlier with his album that came out earlier this year. He's two for two this year. He just dropped another project with Killer Killian called Down in Texas. It's Killer more Keon, the same people. Slim Thug sticks to the script. Mm-hmm. And then Killer, Killer can already rap. People may or may not know or be on him like that. But this is a dope project, 10 songs, straight to the point. You got a couple of fire-ass samples on there. Slim Thug staying in his lane, doing what he does best, not trying to be 19 years old again, not out here trapping, not doing no cornball shit. He doing big boss talking on there. And I'm here for it. Another quality project for Slim Thug, aging gracefully in this hip-hop shit. He is, and he getting better with age. He is 100% getting better with age. That is a fact. Shout out to Slim Thug, man. I'm fucking with it. Um, guys, let us know some of your top songs of the year on Deck TV Podcast on Instagram. Hit the links in the bio. We'll have the links to our official 2020 playlist so far. Some of our favorite songs, man. 20 piece of them things. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you guys joining into the On Deck TV podcast. Check out the Patreon. Check out all the additional content that we got for you. We're reviewing some albums. We talk about some movies. Got the sports things going with the FSP guys. Whole lot of good content from Real Build Media over at the Patreon. And once you get done with that, go over to YouTube. Check out all the videos associated with the network. That's Full Sport Press. That's the On Deck TV podcast. That's fresher than your average, man. You go check all of that stuff out and show your support we greatly appreciate it support the real